the evolution begin! <clears throat> Dead Space returns in February to take tortured protagonist Isaac Clarke on another grisly space adventure. If you ask us, he sounds like he's already had enough. You find somebody else for your suicide mission? We did. She told us to find you. Dead Space 3 associate producer Yara Curry tells us that two games worth of terror and dismemberment will make an engineer a bit grouchy. I don't know if he's angry, I think he's tired, you know, <laughs> he's been going through a lot and obviously it's not over for him, you know. Uh, Unitologists are after him, they want his power to uh, build and destroy the markers and a Apparently, you know, Ellie needs him again um, to go on a new quest. So it's pretty exciting for the players, but maybe not as much for Isaac when you find him in the very beginning of the game. At least this time he has a friend, military man John Carver, who's also the second controllable character in Dead Space 3's much touted cooperative mode. Who's that? A boy. Cute kid. You leave him behind. He's dead. Dana killed him and his mother. I'm sorry. Along with the new mode with its co-op only side missions, there's new weapon crafting and a straight up bigger game between 50 and 100% longer than the last one apparently. 15 seconds to target. Standing by to D-shot. All right, people, we're going in blind, so stay tight on that exit vector. Having a co-op buddy, says Yara, reveals a new side of Isaac's personality. He's been, you know, used to being lonely most of the time and alone and uh, in the sp3 when you play co-op you're going to see a little more how he gets to interact with another player and, and that shows you a little bit more about who he is as a character as well and this time around it's carver going loopy with marker induced paranoia and hallucinations visible only to his player so does that make isaac the same one I wouldn't say he's absolutely sane, but I think he's just more used to it. You know, by then he's been experiencing these effects um, throughout the years, so he knows about them and he maybe is more able to control them. Hey, if you're seeing something that isn't there, you need to tell me, okay, Carver? Whatever you're seeing, it's not real, man. You gotta trust me here. Carver, on the other hand, is absolutely new to this. You know, he's just been exposed to the markers. He actually lost his family to the necromorphs. So he's kind of new to this. And Isaac is going to uh, be kind of his mentor when it comes to that. He warns him about the effects of the dementia, you know, the paranoia, uh, the fact that you don't trust anyone. Uh, he's trying to be there for him and uh, warn him about these effects. You OK? For long-time Dead Space fans, says Yara, there'll also be answers for the big questions in the game's epic sci-fi lore, besides the reason Isaac is dispatched to a dead icy planet to save the day. A lot of people have questions by now about, you know, the lore of the fiction. You know, what are the markers? How are they tied to the necromorphs? What about this dementia effect? You know, where does it come from? And with Dead Space 3 really made it a point to answer some of these questions. Finally, and looking ahead for Dead Space, Yara says the Dead Space universe doesn't begin and end with Isaac Clarke, whatever his fate at the end of Dead Space 3. Finally, uh, Isaac Clarke is so much at the centre of Dead Space. Can you envisage uh, Dead Space without Isaac Clarke? Oh, it's a good question. We haven't really talked about it or we, it's not necessarily something that we want to do, but I guess, I guess it would be possible because this universe is just so rich and there's so many things to explore that I could see um, the Dead Space universe go beyond Isaac. We've already built things um, and, and characters that, you know, things that are outside of just Isaac. So I could see, you know, the universe going beyond him.